I'm Shannon Campbell, Dean of the College of Fine and Applied Arts, back with another weekly vlog. And today I have a very special guest. Uh, her name is Grace Guevara. And Grace is a studio art freshman here in the College of Fine and Applied Arts. Grace, thanks for being with us today. Happy to be here. Oh, great. So what we're going to do is just have a very casual conversation and you are going to get to know me a little bit better, I hope. Mm -hmm. I'll get to know you a little bit better. And all of our friends on the vlog will get to know us in a more intimate way. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay, great. So let's start with, because I don't know this about you. Where are you from? I'm from Fayetteville. You are. I was wondering, now, when I read a little bit about your background, you talked about the fact that when you came here to visit last spring, how you were captivated by the mountains and how mm -hmm. different it was from where you're from. So I was wondering, tell me what was it like growing up in Fayetteville? So Fayetteville is a military town, mm. urban, but it's a lot of cars and it's a lot of streets and a lot of people. And I just wanted to get away. You know, Grace, we have a lot in common. I grew up in a military town too. But I grew up in a place called Waynesville. In some ways it was similar and in other ways a complete opposite. I grew up in a town of about 2,500 people. Um, and when I was there, it was probably about 1,500 people in the Ozarks, but outside of a large military base with about 60 to 80,000 people on base. But because we lived in the small Ozark town, I had a very different upbringing than I think you did because yours seems like it was a little more urban. Mine was 100% rural farm. Um, and so I went to a school a lot like App State um, and it was a school called Missouri State University. And so I was in the Ozark Hills, you're in the Appalachian Mountains. So in some ways we have a lot of things in common. And now you're a studio art major. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your passion for the arts and um, sort of what kind of art you see yourself mastering while you're here. So I've always just had a passion for art ever since I was very little. Um, I recently wrote, not wrote, created a book for my um, RC1000 class. You did everything? Yeah, okay, so <laughs> so um, in the span of two or two to three days, uh -huh. um, which is my fault because I had poor planning, um, I wrote the paper, uh, which was about six pages. Okay. Um, and then I printed it out, and then I took uh, some sheets of multimedia paper, and then I drew it all out. I watercolored it, and then I oh. I inked it, and I put. Okay, so this is a lot more extensive than what <laughs> I was thinking when you said you wrote a book. Like you, and I curated, created. Yeah, and I oh binded my, it. And I, and what? I, yeah. I want to see this book. Yeah, and it's called Two Cans Cherries and Two Cans sweet cherries and cows and something and now something now you've piqued my interest Grace. <clears throat> but but where i'm going is um my first memory <laughs> is of, uh i was coloring a toucan in uh preschool oh. so that's my first memory coloring uh -huh. a toucan so a lot of my memories are of art mm -hmm. my second memory i say in the book is of me drawing a cow why I'm not paying attention and how I'm like always doing art and not talking to people. So that's that. I'm doing like a lot of, a lot more like multimedia art, um, which multimedia, there's painting, mm -hmm. there's drawing, there's sculpture. Mm -hmm. Those are like one media. What I do is I do a lot of like, painting, add drawing on top, and then I might cut it out. That's one thing. And then I might work in some textiles into it. I love it. So that's my favorite thing to do. 
Awesome. You know, one of the things that I think about, because <clears throat> it's interesting when you said people always question why you were into art and not sort of talking and being more social. Yeah. For me, that's how I was with literature. Yeah. When I tell you I could go into a book and just escape and be in another world, I will, and I'm still like that. And I remember um, a couple of years ago, I, I was abroad with my husband and I was in a book and I didn't realize I had been reading for about five hours. And he spoke and he said, you know, are, are we ever going to leave the, this flat? And oh, I was so mad. I was like, you made me leave Westeros. <laughs> yes, it was Game of Thrones. I was like, I was in it. <laughs> Do you feel like that when you're with your art? Are you yeah. just like, I'm in, I'm, and that's what I feel like art does, right? It, it takes, for me as a viewer, it takes me to different places. That's the magic of what you do as a studio artist. So one, I have to thank you for sort of using your gifts, your talent, your skills to take other people on journeys. Um, and I find it really interesting because you've also said you want to, you have an interest in possibly teaching art and bringing that to the place where you really came from and developed as an artist elementary schools like it was always like underfunded because we just went to poor schools um like just throughout our whole school like elementary school middle school high school it's always been underfunded um and we were just like man i wish we could have like had stuff <laughs> and like so like we were both talking about like i wish we could go back to our elementary school mm -hmm. and be the teacher that we wish we could have had. I can't live without creating art. That's just something that I can't do. Mm -hmm. And I think I was talking with my mom one time, like she used to be a yoga teacher and she stopped teaching yoga, but she still does yoga because she just can't function without mm -hmm doing yoga that's just something that she has to do so like i will keep making art like but as a career uh -huh. i'm not sure that's something that i will do like but the beauty i think of what you're telling me is you have the guts to follow your passion and a lot of us don't a lot of us are, are still busy living someone else's dream for us so it seems like you've said, I am a creative. This is what feeds my soul. Um, I will find a way to make a living. And this will always be a part of me. And I think that's such a valuable lesson and such a beautiful way to live. And let's see. Oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about just briefly before we um, go. I hope you're excited. I, I was thinking about it. By the time you start entering into your junior year, you'll be in a new building, a new art building, the renovated Way yeah. Hall. Yeah. I don't know if you got a chance to see Way Hall before the renovation. I did last spring. And I was like, man, this place is pretty cool. And then I got here and it was in East. And I was <laughs> like, what, what happened? Wah, wah. <laughs> but here's the thing. You are going to be moving into a state-of-the-art facility. And if you thought the old way was inspiring, you wait until you see what you're going to get as a junior. And I think you're in a special situation because you'll be one of the few people who've seen the before and get to experience the after mm. um so i'm excited you there's going to be a beautiful gallery um the studios are going to be phenomenal the classroom space is going to be expanded and um i think that you in particular will find it um to be a place with just extraordinary facilities that really bring out the creativity in you so I'm excited to see what you end up doing in the new way hall. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, great. This is a lot of fun. And I just appreciate you taking the time.